This beautiful little place is the Isle of Capri. Or is it Capri? Well, it's Capri, but I just can't bring myself to say Capri. I say Capri, probably because I'm a silly American, but it is what it is. Just don't say the island of Capri. Now that would be embarrassing. It's Isle. And it's located about two thirds of the way down the boot of Italy in the Gulf of Naples just off the coast from Sorrento and Naples itself, and just around the peninsula from the Amalfi Coast. Being the home of the jet set, it can be overrun with pedestrian tourists like ourselves. And you have to work hard to stay away from the crowds. We were very successful in doing that because we got a private guide and a private boat spent virtually all of our time away from the crowds. The boat was probably my favorite part of Capri. Here we are in Marina Grande, getting on the little boat to leave with our captain, Salvatore, who was really just a kid. I mean, look at this guy. He's a kid, but he's been a captain for like 16 years, since he was about 15 years old. He's been on the sea since he was six with his grandfather. And what you see here is me expertly, and I would say athletically, stabilizing the camera while the boat rocks back and forth. I mean, just look at this skill and mastery. Nate, on the other hand, would say that I looked absolutely ridiculous standing up there balancing like I'm on a balancing beam going back and forth, but you do what you have to do to get the shots right. The light everywhere you go changes in an instant. And that's the thing about Capri. People say it's a study in light. Well, you can say that about a lot of places, but particularly Capri, it's true. The light, depending on which angle it's coming from, completely changes what you're seeing, particularly the water. And it's always stunning but the view is very different depending on which way the light is going and what time of day it is and whether it's cloudy, whether it's raining. And it can be doing all of those things on Capri at the same time, even though the island is very small. And here we're coming up on the Faraglioni, which is the icon kind of of the seaside part of Capri. These three rock outcroppings, the Stella, the Mezzo, and the Scopolo. And you can see a little beach club down to the bottom right. An interesting note about these rock formations, there's a little blue lizard that lives on them. And it's the only place in the world that that lizard lives is on these three little rocks. I don't remember what it's called and it doesn't particularly matter, but it's kind of a neat little note about them. And as we're coming through the mezzo here. I'm definitely focused on getting the shot and steadying the camera and not focusing on the pretty girl on the boat off to the side, just so you know. There are a lot of people who come to Capri and spend all their time on the water. Whether they show up via ferry and immediately get on a boat and go around and go swimming, go to the Blue Grotto with the Green Grotto and the Faraglioni, go to the ports, just spend all their time on the water and swimming. And I get that, but it is definitely not the way to see Capri because there's so much more to it than the pretty views from the water. You have to walk around, go to the little places, the quiet places, get away from the, the mad rush of Capri itself, which is, it's not like a mad rush, like a big city, but it's crowded and there's a lot of shops and a lot of people. You have to get out and go walk around. But by the same token, you don't want to come and just spend all your time walking around and not see it from the sea as, as well. You need to do both. Ideally, you would stay there and everybody would leave and then you'd have the place to yourself. But who has time for that? Not many people. But if you can make the time to go at least explore some of the parts of the island, like taking the cable car up to Monte Salaro 
and seeing the view from up there, then coming down back into Anaka Capri. And then obviously take the road down from Anna Capri down to Capri. Those are all individually worth seeing. So I just mentioned Capri and Anna Capri and what, what am I talking about? So at the very top of the Isle of Capri is Monte Solaro. It's the highest point in Capri and you take a chairlift to get up there, which is where we are at right now. Now we're coming down from Monte Solaro in the chairlift. It's the highest point. You come down from there into Anna Capri. There are only two towns on Capri, Capri and Anna Capri. Anna Capri, I believe, means little Capri, something like that. And it's the little sister for Capri. But it sits up on a mountaintop high above Capri. So you're coming down from the highest point, Monte Solaro, down to Anna Capri. But when you're in Anna Capri, you're still really high. This little town as you can see, sits on a plateau very high off of the sea. You're still really elevated up here. And it's kind of the lesser known part of Capri. And then from Anna Capri, you take a treacherous hike down into Capri, which is much lower, but it's still off of the sea. It sits pretty high itself. And it runs all the way down to the sea where you have the Grand Marina Grande and Marina Piccolo on opposite sides of the island. But they're all these stacked elevations going from the bottom of the, the marinas up to Capri proper, higher up the road up to Ana Capri, and from there up to Monte Solaro. So we were wandering around up on the mountaintops, up above high, having lunch, looking at the views, taking the chairlift up and down. And then we take a small little taxi from the restaurant down into Anna Capri. And I, I am still convinced this guy was trying to kill us, but look how tiny these roads are. One little car in the way and you're, you know, you can be stuck here for half an hour. But we get down into Anna Capri and this is what it looks like. It's basically little shops, lots of clothing, lots of places to spend money, lots of places to have a coffee and, and lunch. Some people hike from Anna Capri down to Capri. We took a taxi. The taxi is actually a, kind of an interesting ride for just sitting in a taxi for a couple minutes. You change elevation quite a bit. The roads are twist back the whole way. There's traffic, you have to stop. Trucks can only go one at a time each direction. Everyone has to stop and wait for a truck. It's typical Italian mess, but it's neat and it's fun. And the view is fantastic along this road. It's so pretty. And I think this is the type of thing that you cut out and don't include in a video <laughs> of riding around in a taxi looking over a railing. This is just kind of the nonsense behind the scenes stuff of what things are actually like. But I personally, I think that's part of the charm. I think the view from this taxi coming down here and just kind of the the chaos is part of the fun of a place like Capri. Here you're getting a look down into Capri. Along that ridge is really Capri proper, but all of that is Capri. You'll see a sign here, we're leaving Anna Capri and entering Capri right there. So as you look down in there, you could see that ridge with with a lot of houses sitting on it. That's kind of the the main old town area of Capri, the, the famous hotel and the cafes and all the places where people buy all their little knickknacks. That's all up there. And you have to kind of, it's, it's a little bit of a funicular or a hike or a taxi ride from the marina up into that area, but all of it is Capri. We are now entering Capri but there's still quite a bit of elevation to get down through before you get into what people think of as Capri. While we're just going down the hill and admiring the view, I wanna tell a little story. I wanna mention something. We had a private guide who arranged most everything for us, including the boat and the areas where we could get to in the chairlift and all this kind of stuff. It was great. Most of our guides were very professional and very helpful. 
But I was a little irritated with this guide because here we are coming to Capri and you can see it there and we're not gonna go there. And you wouldn't really know the difference if you didn't know Capri, but I know Capri, I've been here and I know my way around. But that hi historic or famous, popular, trendy area of shopping and all the stuff over there, we're not gonna go to. We went to Ana Capri, we went to Monte Salaro, we went to, to a lot of beautiful viewpoints and we had a great boat tour around the island, but she didn't take us to Capri proper. And that bothered me. That was the plan we were supposed to, but we didn't. By the, by the time the day was over and we were getting ready to get on a ferry, I was kind of scratching my head and thinking, you know, we never went to Capri. Here we're in a roundabout. You look to the right, that's one side of the island down towards Marina Piccolo. And this other side, which would be straight ahead from here, you can see it off to the right, is where Marina Grande is. And that's kind of the main entry point into the Isle of Capri. But anyway, let's get back out on the boat and watch me stabilize the camera here to get a steady shot. But let me continue with my story about the guide. If you don't know the details, and by the way, we're looking here at Marina Piccolo, and right up there in that little crotch is where that roundabout was that we were just at a minute ago. And look at this house on that cliff to the top right. What an amazing place to have a house. But anyway, back to the guide. She really just lost track of time and didn't plan very well, didn't spend a lot of time with us. Actually, she dropped us off as much as she could and took off someplace else. You know, the boat trip we took was much more private and took much longer, I think, than her original plan was. She just lost track of the itinerary and we ended up having to skip the most famous township part of the area. But look, I really didn't care and I know Nate wasn't gonna miss it. He hates that kind of stuff. Anyway, just walking around shopping and looking for knickknacks. This is the green grotto. And look at the light coming through here. It's just beautiful. And this is, again, one of the reasons you have to see Capri from the sea. And there's a more famous grotto called the Blue Grotto, which we're actually not going into. But this one was just beautiful. And here we come around to the other side of it. And it's not the one straight ahead. I forget the name of those little three inlets. They're the Three Sisters or something like that. I forget the name of them, but I'm sure it's much more dramatic in Italian. But, and then here off to the right, look at this little black hole where these people are swimming and coming out of. Would you believe that's the same green grotto we just saw from the other side? It's the exact same thing, but again, that light depending on where it's coming from, it, you have a completely different experience. We're coming up here now on the Blue Grotto, which is just this little hole you're gonna be able to see, but it's magical from inside if you swim in there or take a little canoe in and look back out. Again, that light, that's where it gets beautiful. From the outside, it looks like just a little black hole. That's it right there. And it's a little treacherous when the waves hit too, depending on where, where the waves are. And that road up there, that's the road we came down in the taxi from Ana Capri, which is right behind the sun on the other side of that little ledge. There's a plateau. That's where Ana Capri is. And we came down that road into Capri. It's such a nice view. And now we enter Marina Grande again and look up towards Capri proper. There are a lot of nice little cafes and restaurants on that little rim right there looking out that are pretty nice. But I'm not even upset that we didn't go there. I would say get away from the crowds. Forget the little trinkets and the overpriced coffee. Enjoy the island that's always been there and just enjoy it for what it is, live in the moment, and just find a way 
to freeze time and enjoy that moment. Capri is a place you'll never forget.